I've had a lot of my online students asking me, how does the right arm work in the golf swing? How should we set this right forearm in the golf swing? As this is a really important topic to discuss, I've decided to create a full breakdown tutorial on how to set this right arm in position. We're also gonna be looking at why we should be setting it in this specific position and a three-step drill that we're gonna be diving into later on to help you create this effortless and smooth goal swing that you're looking for with this right arm set in the correct position. So for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Harry PJ, Golf Professional, transforming golfers worldwide from the golf projects. And feel free to drop a comment down below the tips or drills video topic you'd like me to cover in a future video. And if you do come so far and enjoy this concept, make sure you hit the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen so you stay up to date on my latest uploads coming out every Tuesday and Friday to help you improve your game. So setting this right forearm in position then, for left-handed golf, it's gonna be the left forearm. So what we tend to see a lot of players do is that when they come to gripping the golf club, they'll grip the golf club like this here. And when you have a look at this position here, it doesn't look wrong at all. It doesn't, doesn't look anything wrong there, does there? But when we set this club to the ground like so, you can clearly see if we kept our eye on the focus point, which should be this elbow here, it is facing away from us, going towards this camera angle here. What I've done to do this is I've gripped the golf club. We get what we call this internal forearm rotation. So internal, think of internal as going towards the body and external going away from the body. So internal rotation going towards the body to grip this club. You can see that as soon as I grip the club, my elbow now is facing away from us, away from the golf ball towards that camera over there. So what happens is when we set up in this position here, watch what happens here. I can take the club back all the way up on plane, up to around parallel here, just about. But from this position here, I can only do one or two things. I can either have a lot of rotation and drag this elbow this way to the top of the swing, causing this elbow to get very flared out, stuck almost behind the body. Or if we're limited to how much rotation we can create, then we're going to end up lifting the club very upwards. Again, where's the elbow facing? Too far away from us, getting this very much disconnected position. So as we come to transition in the downswing, well, if we're going up this way, struggling to get that rotation taking place, we're going to come straight back down like so because we've got this very disconnected swing taking place from the arms and the upper body, we're gonna get this timing and swing sequence so out of sync during the downswing phase. And for those of you who get this rotation, we're able to take this club into the top of the backswing and get very rounded here, well, we've gotta react. We can't swing this club going this way, otherwise we're gonna to get too stuck. So what do we do? We force this upper body to begin that downswing phase and get this club traveling back trying to get it onto plane, but the tendency we see is I'm going too far over plane. So we either get too steep from disconnected here and very stuck, or we get too steep from getting too over the top in the downswing. And that massively affects the strike, affects the distance and the overall consistency to your golf shots. So we want to be making sure that during our setup, rather than seeing the elbow in simple terms flaring away from the body, we want it to point towards the body. So all I've just done there is I've just took the club and I'm gonna start off just a nice little simple drill, simple move you can do every time before you set up, is have this right palm facing towards the ground. Okay, this is very internally rotated, remember from what I mentioned before? Internally rotated here, causing that arm to move towards the body. So we're setting this internally rotated position. All I'm thinking about though from this is just seeing the right palm facing towards the ground. To get this externally rotated, we just move the right palm towards the sky to get it to face towards the sky. You can see there the difference that has on where that elbow is and my entire forearm to get that right hand, that right palm moving from pointing towards the ground to up towards the ceiling above me. That helps us set this arm in this lovely position at the start of the golf swing. But the question is, how do we then grip the golf club? We don't grip the golf club like this, do we? So go over this again, take this palm pointing towards the sky like this. And then all I'm gonna get you to do from here is ensure that the only thing that's going to move is your wrist. So you can see that I've done my very best there to avoid this entire forearm from going back to internal rotation. 
I'm just ensuring from this position here that this hand is just twisting to face the grip. So we're just getting that hand to twist and face the grip. A good checkpoint to make sure you're doing this right is this right elbow or left elbow being uh, left-handed golfers is pointing just underneath your trail chest muscle, okay? So trail chest muscle, your right chest muscle or left chest muscle for left-handed players again. So all I've done from here is I've just simply gone right palm to ground, right palm to sky, twist the wrist so it points towards the club and then I can just grip it as usual. And a good checkpoint again is getting that elbow pointing just underneath the chest. So now when I come to set up in this position here, it's gonna make it so much easier for us to take this club back all the way up to the top of the swing. And now diving into the drill. So step number one, how do we start this golf swing with this right arm set, this right forearm set in this position that we've got it to? Well, going back to what we noticed earlier, what players have the tendencies of doing with this internal rotation, we get either to this way or to upright. And I mentioned the, the common similarity of this earlier. What was that? The elbow is flaring away from us. So we wanna see this elbow staying a little bit more closer to us. And if I just do this now, without really making the golf swing, I'm just moving my hand up to the top. What am I doing with my trail arm here? I'm just folding it up to the top of the swing. So this is all we want to be doing. We just want to be allowing this arm to fold upwards in this natural motion. And you're gonna find it so much easier now we've got this trail arm set in position. And what have I done though, just to get this movement taking place here? Okay, well if I stop rotating, I have simply done a bicep curl. All I've done there, created flexion all the way up to the top of the swing. It doesn't need to be properly extended like this because the tendency is for us to get too stiff and then it makes it difficult to take the club back. So we're setting the arm like this here and we're just doing this bicep curl, okay? So then when I add some rotation into this, that helps us set that arm into the ideal position. Look at where the right elbow is there. It's pointing towards us, but it's fairly close to our body. It's staying nice and connected with the body working away up to the top of the swing. Before we move on to this, I know what you're about to say. I know what you're about to say because quite a few players on tour, a few, swing it up to the top with this flared elbow out, very high up to the sky but they've got other swing mechanics that they've trained for so many years to allow those movements to be right for their swings. It's really important we find a much more reliable, more consistent top of the back swing position to help us then create this smooth and effortless downswing and overall golf swing in your game. We've got the right arm, we've spoken about that bicep curl taking place. Well, if I was to take the club and I'm gonna grip it just nearly halfway like this here, with the grip pointed towards my target, and I just fold this bicep curl, okay? But all I'm going to do from here is I'm gonna get the club to move this way. And how am I doing this here? I'm getting this club to move this way. Well, I am just simply rotating. I'm simply adding this rotation as I'm flexing this trail arm, getting this bicep curl curling this arm up to the top of the swing. Just simply get this back of yours facing towards the target. For those of you in the indoor golf facilities, it's going to be facing towards the net. So just ensure that you're getting that back facing towards the target. Getting this bicep curl, curling this arm up to the top of your swing. Once you've done this a couple of times to get a good feel for this back to target, bicep curl it up to the top with this trail arm set in position, you can then add your lead arm, your left arm back on the club. Left-handed golfer's the right hand. So when I take the club now, and I'm gonna set up, just start off with a couple from this position here, just so we get used to this, I'm just going to simply Think of my lead arm as the guide taking this up to the top of the swing. So I'm pretty much forgetting that it's even there. I'm just thinking all that movement, that folding actually is taking place from the trail arm. Setting this position here, getting that back to target. You can see the club obviously starts from parallel to the ground, but as I'm folding this trail arm up to the top of the swing, getting this back facing towards the target, you can see how easy it is for me here just to get that club in a more connected, more reliable, Top of the back swing position. Similar to Rory, Tommy, Adam Scott, I could go on. Really nice set in position up to the top of the swing. And now how do we get this move up to the top of the swing from the starting point in the address position? It's dead simple. All you need to think is rather than right, how do I take the club back to here? We're just thinking of that bicep curl. Again, 
and we're thinking of this back facing towards the target. Rather than starting from here now, we're just getting it to start from the address positions. So two hands on the club, and all I'm doing here is I'm just feeling and imagining this bicep curl taking place up to the top and allowing that back to face towards the target. Just ensure this trail arm is set, so you obviously if you wanna do this again, you can do before taking the swing. Have the palm facing towards the ground, rotate it around palm to sky, and I'm just simply twisting my hand to grip the club here. Same two feels, bicep curl it up to the top and get this back facing towards the target. So there's stage one of the drill. Then we can start to add in the squatting motion, this pressing, adding this pressure into the ground. Because too many golfers I see have a tendency, as soon as they get to the top, even with this lovely top of the back swing position, is they find it difficult to just get this natural transition taking place. They'll always have the tendency to throw their arms out, use the upper body to begin that golf swing when it should be. The swing sequence should be starting from the lower body. So to get this transition, this lower body initiated to begin this downswing phase like the pros do on tour, we can do this too, is by allowing the feeling of the, this squatting motion taking place here. And you can see when I'm doing this, I'm not moving my upper body whatsoever. I am simply just getting, to, getting into this position here and squatting, lowering myself towards the ground. One key though I want you to take from this is we are not whatsoever trying to transition, transfer this way onto the lead side just yet. Too many players I see when they do this, they try and transfer that pressure here, okay? And how ground reaction forces work for every force acting on a stationary object, think of the stationary object as the floor, your mat that you're hitting off at the driving range or the grass out on the golf course, there is always an equal and opposite reaction. So if we're getting this force, this pressure into the ground going this way into the lead side, where's the reaction going to be? We're gonna be pushing back off in this direction. So just before we make contact with the golf ball, too many golfers I see, they'll try and get this pressure too early and then they end up having to push out. They press them when they get this force taking place, it pushes them away from the golf ball. That's why you see quite a few golfers get this early extension when they're trying to transfer the weight onto the lead side in the downswing. So what I'm doing here, the feeling is getting up to the top of the swing for stage one. And then from here now, we're just simply adding this pressure, getting this squat taking place in the downswing. Again, no movement whatsoever from the upper body, everything staying nice and still in this set position that we had it from the top of the swing. I'm just ensuring that that pressure is going in the middle of my feet. If you do have the tendency, okay, don't mean to overcomplicate things for you, but if you do have a tendency to forward shift way too much and almost get this slide taking place, you can exaggerate this move even more. Just feel the pressure staying in this trail side of the body. If we get it in the trail side of the body slightly more, we're more inclined to then push up and through to target. If we were to jump up, we would squat down, wouldn't we? So what's gonna happen now? We're pushing upwards. We're getting this effortless power, this effortless motion by getting the pressure into the ground to get that equal and opposite force taking place. So the squat to here, and then I'm pushing upwards. And when I'm pushing upwards here, you can see that I'm allowing my chest to face towards the target. So I'm getting this squat, then I'm pushing up and through, chest facing the target. And you can see how effortless that is for me to do. I'm not trying to swing the golf club here. All I'm doing is getting that right arm set in position, getting that bicep curl to take place, and then I'm just simply forgetting about what this does in the downswing. I'm just squatting down and then pushing up and through. We want to be ensuring that the arms and the body, the upper body are nice and relaxed once we've set the club at the top. So we're staying nice and relaxed here and we're allowing the lower body to take care of that downswing. Bringing this all into one motion, hit five shots in stages. So number one, we're thinking, and before we do this, we're thinking this trail arm set in position, taking this palm, pointing it towards the sky, elbow in position pointing just underneath the chest, twist the wrist, grip the club. Okay, so bicep curl it up to the top, back to target, and we're squatting down, feeling the pressure 50-50 or slightly on the trail side for those of you who'd like to exaggerate this. 
and we're pushing up and through like so and you'll notice on the trap man here if it picks up no, probably had it too far forward. This is the new IO, so I've got to make sure I have it in the perfect position. And with the new mats, it's difficult for me to um, get right. So I'm going to take it from this position here and let's see what happens from the next shot. So you can see there, that wasn't a lot of effort whatsoever, was it? I wasn't forcing this downswing to take place. I wasn't forcing anything. I was just trying to get a good feel for those three movements taking place in my golf swing. Then again, you can go a little bit quicker still doing this in stages build it up to your fifth one once you've done your fifth one now we're bringing this all into one motion so from here we're just going bicep curl squat and turn up and through working up to the top down and through like so and then again we can start to build this up build up that speed just allow the club to do whatever it needs to do on the downswing just get in that squat pushing back up all the arms or the right arm needs to do the right forearm needs to do once it's set in that position in the golf swing is get this bicep curl up to the top of the swing so a little bit quicker all in one motion so it's up oh well i ramped up the gears on that one that probably wasn't gear two that was more like gear three or gear four but you can then start to bring this into a full swing and then if you're suffering with the strike a little bit trust me on it Get used to feeling this motion, this dipping motion, this pressing into the ground and then pushing back up, getting that chest to flow towards the target, to move towards the target. A few of you may be thinking, well, hang on a sec, we shouldn't be dipping in the golf swing, we should be keeping our head still. The head is allowed to naturally flow in the golf swing, but also it will feel like to you, you're dipping this much, almost like half a foot. But when you watch yourself doing it on camera, you do it about this much, half an inch. Trust me on this. That's all it's going to take to help you transition and get this club working back down on this natural plane, this right plane that we're after to get more consistency, get better ball striking and develop this effortless and smooth golf swing that we're all looking for. Just like the pros do every single time without fail out on the golf course. So quick little recap just before we finish. We've spoken about how we don't want this internal rotation with the forearm at the address position. We want to see this external rotation. So right palm is going to point towards the sky. Elbow is the good checkpoint pointing directly underneath the chest. Twist the hand over to grip the club like so. Then when we make our swings, all we're thinking about is this bicep curl and getting your back facing towards the target. For stage two, we're feeling this squatting motion taking place directly in the middle of both feet. 50-50, if not favoring more on the trail side. And then from here, we're pushing upwards and through and getting this chest to face towards the target. Downswing, arms are relaxed, allowing the lower body to take care of the swing. So one more shot just to finish. Let's see what we can do. Full speed. That was really nice, nice little draw on that one. So you're not just going to gain more consistency from this, you're also going to gain more distance with that effortless, smooth golf swing taking place. So if you've come this far and go ahead and give this a try, then comment down below or reach out to me on my website to let me know how you get on from watching the video. By all means, hit the subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner here so you're kept up to date on my latest videos coming out every Tuesday and Friday to help you improve your golf. And you may as well check out this video over here if you're looking into improving your ball striking with the irons. A great, simple, the number one rule to hitting the sweet spot every single time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.